Roxy Troops, Roxy here and welcome to Roxy Plays Games and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Before I get into today's video I want to do my usual thank you, so thank you for everyone who has liked my previous videos and thank you for everyone who has subscribed to the channel, as always it is really really appreciated. Right, we are going to be continuing with our tutorials in Microsoft Flight Simulator and today I'm just going to be doing a nice simple flight, but I'm going to be doing this um, in a little bit more detail from our last flight that we did and we are here if you didn't already notice at manchester airport egcc uh, this is the maco sims version of um, egcc and it's got a lot more detail in it it's really really cool uh, but yeah this is where we currently are and we're actually going to be flying up to um, edinburgh today uh, EGPH. Now, for today's video, I'm going to presume that you know how to do flight planning, uh, putting all that information into the relevant folders, or uh, doing your flight plan uh, on the loading screen of the sim where you do your um, departure and arrival airports and putting in your uh, flight plan that way. If you don't and you have got absolutely no idea how to do any flight planning whatsoever then please do put a comment um, below and I shall do a tutorial specific for that because uh, it, it is quite time consuming to talk about all of that sort of stuff and I'm more than happy to do it. But for today's video this is all about flying the A320 uh, fly by wire mod. Right so we're inside the cockpit cold and dark um, I'm going to be doing this flight off that sim and I'm going to do another flight on that sim so you can see the differences on uh, the communication side of things um, but what I will do today is mention at certain points when you would be contacting ATC just so that you got a little bit of a heads up so first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our overhead panel uh, we need to turn our batteries one and two on uh, we've got our external power connected so we can, can click our external power button here and then from there we're going to turn on our crew supply oxygen and we are going to align our ideas because these take about seven minutes uh, now the proper way of doing it is you turn one on you wait until it says on battery here or on bat Uh, and then you uh, can then do the next one. So we've done number one, number two, wait for it to come on, on bat. But as far as the flight sim is concerned, you can actually just do all three of them. Uh, and that's all fine. It will still do the job. From there, we're then going to come down. We're going to turn on our emergency exit lights. We're going to arm that. So up one click. We're going to arm our, um, or light the no smoking to auto and seatbelt signs are going to go on. Oh, I need to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. Um, next thing we need to do is turn the nav and logo lights on. Now, I'm not a professional um, or real life pilot. Uh, all the information that I'm giving you is what I've gathered from watching other streamers, other YouTubers. And from what I gathered, you turn on the nav and logo light to let other um, people around you know that there's either crew and or passengers on board the plane. So we'll turn that on. And from there, if you are using the fly-by-wire mod, which obviously I am, we can turn the tablet on and we can do our refueling. If you're not doing using this for the refueling, you can come up in here and do your fueling um within this part of the plane or within this um, fueling thing here and obviously do your fueling but we're going to be using the plane so what we're going to do is we're going to import our flight from Simbrief EGCC to EGG, EGPH nice short flight today um, but we're going to go to our dispatch OFP we're going to check our fuel 4871 and we're going to put that in here so we've already got a bunch of fuel in there, so we need to defuel. Uh, 4871. And then we can do that. That's saying it's going to take six minutes. 
um, to defuel and our alignment is still going to take seven minutes so that is all fine from there uh, and you can only do this segment if you've got fuel on board um, and that's starting the APU you can't start the APU if you've got no fuel on board it's like a generator so you it's like the generator to then start the engines um, it's my kind of simple method of um, explaining this if you've got zero fuel on board and you try and start the APU it won't start and then you'll then have a fault and it's a real pain to try and um, get going again so we've got fuel on board so we can click the APU master switch on and then wait about three to five seconds and then we can click the start button here and what that's going to do if we come down to our displays down here uh, where it was showing the plane with all the doors it's now showing the APU and we can see the EGT temperature is going up the uh, end percentage is going to go up flaps are open and then after a, a short while we'll start getting some numbers here and then once it's ready and available uh, it will then flick back over to the plane display so we'll just sit here and watch this for a second so you can see what's going on normally I would be doing other stuff while this is happening but just for the purposes of today's video so you can actually see what's going on I turn the brightness down on that display I generally don't use this it is just there is just as a backup right so APU generator is done it's saying APU available and we've got APU available on this display here alignment's gone down to six minutes and we're just going to wait and now it's flipped over uh, to this screen here now at this point uh, if you are using um, oh, why did I just do that if you're using some form of um, plug-in to simulate passengers then obviously you want to get the jetway over get that all connected up so that passengers can come on board you can see it's showing that the cabin door is open And once that's done, we can then go back to our uh, overhead and we can turn on our fuel pumps. So like I say, I wouldn't normally sit there and watch that display. I would have done the APU and then done the fuel pumps here. Right, we can then come back down to our what's called the glare shield. Um, and we need to, need to do a couple of little things here. First thing we want to do is select whether we're using uh, inches or hectopascals on this. Uh, we're going to use hectopascals and it's Q and H. We just need to check what the Q and H is here. And if we click on this little display here, we've got our departure and our arrival. And the departure is going to be 1016 and the arrival is going to be 1012 currently. So we can come back over here and change this to 1016 make sure that the flight directors are on they generally are on by default but sometimes they're not so just make sure that they are on uh, we can turn on our constraints um, lights here all that will do is on the flight plan it will just show some altitude you don't have to have this on but I generally just have it on so I can just double check to make sure that I am at the right altitudes um, and then the next thing we want to do is set our initial altitude now you can either get this from the charts but sometimes it's not on every chart um, and ATC may give you this uh, if not have a look at your charts and just see kind of where your um, departure is so if I just bring up my charts actually uh, so I'm going to show you with Navigraph there are other charts out there um, chart fox is an example that's free if you are a, um, a VATSIM subscriber um, which is free obviously so if I just bring this up for you uh, and I'll just load in a flight which is from Simbrief EGC to EGPH and then well, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on so we've got our flight plan here um, but what we want to do is we want to go to our departure open charts list 
and then I can have a look at the airport. So here we are. This is why I like Navigraph. It is a paid subscription, um, but it is well worth it. Um, it's a lot more detailed, and obviously you get to see where you are by using this enable moving maps icon. So we're going to pin that. Uh, we're going to be taking off two, three right, so it's a nice simple taxi to get there. Uh, we then want our SID. So SID is for your departure, and STAR is for your uh, uh, arrival, and then you've got your approach for your ILS um, or VOR landing, whatever you're going to be doing. But we want SID. Uh, now what you can do is you can click on this show overview to see and each airport will have uh, its SIDs that are going to be going off in a certain direction. So like, you've got the Monty that's coming down south, you've got Listo it's coming down south, you've got the Asmim that's going over to the west, you've got the Desi that's going over to the right, and we've got Pole Hill that's going up uh, north, and that's the one that we're uh, probably going to be wanting to use. Um, and when I look at my SIM brief, um, our SID is the Pole Hill 5 Romeo. So what I can do is I can come down here, Pole Hill 5 Romeo, which is this one here. So let's click on this. And that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be coming out pretty much immediately turning right and then uh, uh, to Zoomat, Exumat, we'll call it Zoomat. Uh, and then we're going to be doing a right turn um, to the Pole Hill uh, VOR. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to pin that. And just have a look at that over the flight plan we can see this yellow uh, sorry this pink is our flight plan uh, and that's overlaid on the chart as well so that's that's the main reason why i like navigraph charts so much it's little things like this it just makes it easier to see what's going on right so um we can hide that out of the way now Um, uh, oh, sorry, what I didn't actually do is look at the chart to see, um, so let me just show you. A couple of things that we're going to be wanting to look at here is the transition altitude, which is 5,000 feet. Uh, each airport is going to be slightly different, but in the UK it's generally between 5,000 and 7,000 feet. Um, but again, there are some that are um, a little bit different. So we've got a maximum speed. Um, of 250 knots below flight level 100 unless otherwise authorized uh, but altitudes that we want to be looking at is uh, D16 at pole we need to be between 4,000 and 5,000 feet 5,000 feet at pole 5,000 feet at pole hill VOR um, so 5,000 feet is going to be our initial altitude that we are going to climb to. So let's put 5,000 feet in there. Um, again, if you're not flying on VATSIM, you don't need to worry about this. You can just stick it all the way up as high as um, the cruise altitude is. Right, uh, the alignment seems to be a, be done. Uh, so that's brilliant. Uh, how about the fuel? Uh, refueling is done fantastic so what we can do now is get our flight plan sorted out so we're going to come to our Mac do here we're going to click on FMGC uh, and then we're going to click on the Mac do menu button ATSU ALC menu uh, we want in it press which is the top one here. Now this, again, is all presuming that you know how to import your flight plan into here. If you don't know, you need to learn this before you can obviously do this, unfortunately. Um, it's not too complicated. Uh, right, init data re uh, request is we uh, the button that we need to click on, and that will load in our uh, flight details. So we've got our call sign, the Pilot Club 9049, departure, departing EGCC, de de destination EGPH, fuel on board 4.9, and the ETE of 40 minutes. We then click on the AOC menu button, performance weights and balance, and we just need to cross-reference our fuel, and if we click the right arrow, 
our payload to make sure that it corresponds with our um, OFP. So if I click on one, so fuel, uh, we already know 4871, 4871, taxi fuel 200, trip fuel 1578, so that's all fine. So we can click refuel load and then move over to our payload 15232 payload 15232 so that's all good and then we can just check the rest of it make sure that's all fine our zero fuel weight zero fuel weight center of gravity um, that's all good so click on payload then what we need to do is we need to click on init init request and this is actually going to load in the flight plan itself so it's given us um, an alternative which is back here again got our from and to flight number cost index 25 cruise altitude of 240 uh, temperature of minus 32 tropo 37570 so tropo we've got here is 384 three two three three eight three two three three eight three two three so that's going to go in the tropo so it does round it up or down and then if we click right on the right arrow this is going to go to our second page on the init the way you can tell if there's two more than one page is these arrows here um so you can see that you can keep moving it's only two pages um but we want to do our zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight, center of gravity. We can just do that by clicking this button here. That will load it in the what we call the scratch pad down the bottom. And then we can click it again and it will populate that. And then we can do the same with the fuel planning or the block fuel. But I can tell you now, every time I've done this, it always gives me an incorrect amount. 3.3 .3 is not our block fuel. Our block fuel... Uh, is 4.87 so say 4.9 so we're going to put in let's clear that 4.9 in the scratch pad down the bottom and then we're going to click here and then that will populate all this information two things we want to check on here is the alternate um, airport fuel um, and the trip wind so alternate is just down here, 8 LTN, 1.6, and our trip wind is T20. So 1.6 is our alternate. That will just do some minor changes. And our trip wind was T20? Yeah, T20. So a tailwind of 20 knots is going in there. Again, it's just reduced the trip time down by a minute. Not a lot, but every little helps, as uh, some places like to say. So that's the fuel and weight and all that sort of stuff done. We can then go to our flight plan. And we need to put in our departure and our arrival, our SID and our STAR. Now, if you're using the uh, inbuilt flight planning uh, tool at the very start... Uh, before you load into uh, the airport uh, it will populate this for you so there's no need to do this um, do those changes unless of course it's incorrect um, but we're going to go EGCC um, we're going to go departure we're departing out of 23 right and we're taking the Pole Hill 5 Romeo departure there is no transition so we can click insert and then we need to do the same so now it says egcc 23 right and then we need to do our destination arrival and uh, we're coming in on ILS 24 and it's the in pip one echo in pip one echo and we want the TLA fire and then we're going to click insert and that's it that's the flight plan done what we can then do if the um ideas are aligned is we can actually 
see our flight plan here. So we go to plan and then get ourselves at a angle where I can click on the arrows down here. Where's my mouse gone? I've lost my mouse. Wait, mouse, where have you gone? Um, my mouse, there it is. Wow, what, what, why does my mouse cursor keep disappearing when I bring it over the plane? Um, got a little bit of an issue here. Oh, there we go. It's back again. Um, that was weird. Right, so I need to get myself at an angle where I can see the display and see these arrows. And all we're going to do is just click up and it'll just scroll through. And we just want to make sure that this is looking the same as what our sim brief looks. Obviously, Microsoft Flight Simulator isn't perfect. And sometimes it will give you a different... Um, different routes or different waypoints um, and it's generally from esk do where it gets a little bit messy but it's all looking good TLA yep yeah, that it all looks fine let me just zoom out a little bit and yeah um, because I put in a TL TLA um, via it's actually done it correctly if I hadn't have done this it may have sent me up here and done something real crazy um, but that's all good so we can come back onto arc uh, zoom back in here uh, come back down to our display uh, and then the final thing we need to do on here is our performance so we can click on the performance we just need to do our V speeds and our flaps so we're going to be taking off flaps one and then we need to do our V speeds uh, and all we need to do is just double click on each of these buttons here so one puts it down the scratch part and then two puts it in here and then transition altitude we know was 5,000 feet from looking at the charts. So that can go in there. And that's it. That's uh, our Macadoo done. And all ready to go. There is bits, uh, a few bits more that we can do. A few bits more. That's not very good English. There are a few more bits that we can do within this um, as far as um, professionalism is concerned. But that's the basics that we need to do to be able to fly uh, this plane and fly it on that sim. Uh, now at this point, or maybe just before you did this, uh, you can do your clearance and ask for clearance to ATC. You would do that uh, generally with delivery if they're online, if not ground. Obviously if ground aren't online, you just work your way up to so then tower, approach, and then uh, center. Um, I'm hoping when I actually come to do uh, the flight on VATSIM that I do get multiple controllers online so you can see the changeovers. Um, but yeah, we would do our clearance and we would just cross-reference um, what we've programmed in here with what they tell us. So obviously, 2-3 right, the departure, which is the um, Pole Hill 5 Romeo departure for 2-3 right. Uh, and that's it now what we can do once we've got all of our passengers on board is we can get rid of our jetway so that can uh, disappear and that's going we can go up to our overhead panel and we can start planning for uh, push and start so you've done your clearance you got your clearance, you've um, checked your um, MacDo to make sure that that's all correct. Um, you've got all of your passengers on board. Then what we would do is we would be transferred from delivery to ground and we would ask for push and start uh, clearance, basically so we can um, push back to wherever it is we need to push back to and start our engines. Uh, so that's what you would do then. Now, prior to you pushing and starting, what you would do, if I come back down here, uh, missing out a little bit here, sorry, is you would um, put on your squawk code. So all you would do is turn this to auto, clear this, and then type in whatever squawk code you've been given. So let's say it's 3256. Uh, then you would then contact ground and say, um, ready for push and start. Okay. Cool, so let me come back up there. I just need to change something on my 
note here. One second. Uh, transponder. I'm actually going to put the transponder. Um, right. Well, I'm just amending my own personal notes because I actually had transponder um, after um, doing the beacons and everything, but you would need to get clearance to push and start before you would push and start, obviously. And to do that, you need to have your squawk code on, otherwise they will tell you. Right, so we put our squawk code on. So just to, just to uh, refresh, because I may have confused you a little bit there, um, once you've done your MACDO or prior to doing your MACDO, you're going to uh, request clearance and they're going to give you all that information as well as your squawk code. You need to turn your transponder to auto and then type in the squawk code that you're using. Leave this on standby. It's just this one that needs to be on auto. Um, then you would request uh, push and start clearance which we have got. So then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our beacon lights. Uh, we're going to disconnect our external power. And we're going to make sure that he has gone, which he has. And call the tug, which we have done. And we are ready to push back. So, oh back up here APU bleed can come on now so beacon lights on APU bleed on disconnect external power um, tug is connected so we are ready to push back so we're going to put on the engine starts here and um, to IGN start we're going to start engine number one and then we're going to let the tug push us back. And here he goes. Obviously, ATC would tell you uh, what direction to face. We're going to be facing east. And then push back to side to stop. Hit the wrong button there, I think. Right, so engine one is good to go. So let's start engine number two. Continue with our pushback. We can stop there and push back. And wait for engine number two to start up. Wait for this to say available. Which it is now. So 
So what we can do next is turn the engine switch to normal. Uh, go back up to our, matter of fact before we go up to our overhead we can arm our ground spoilers while we're down here. We can go flaps 1 uh, and we can turn our weather switches on which is these two switches here. So auto and then system 1 so it's on this side here. Then we can go to our overhead. We can turn APU bleed off. Uh, we can turn our master switch off and then we can turn our taxi light on. We can ping our cabin crew just to let them know that uh, they need to be seated. And then the final thing we need to do is just check that everything is, um, is all set. Um, but before we do that, we want to put on our auto brakes for takeoff to maximum, and then we can click this TO config button here, and we just need to make sure that that's all in the green. If there's any issues, it will be showing there. But we've done everything that we need to do. Auto brakes are at maximum. Um, our signs are all on. Cabin is ready. Spoilers are on. Flaps are set to takeoff, and takeoff config is normal then we would contact uh, ground uh, requesting permission to taxi and i've just unplugged my headphones because of my big fat caveman feet just plugged it back in all right i've got all the audio back in my ears again right so let's taxi It's a nice simple taxi out of here. We're literally just going to go. We can actually take off here, which we will do. We don't need to go right down to the end um, for this runway because it's a nice long one so we'll actually take off here so prior to the uh, runway before you're going to take off um, or prior to getting to this point uh, you ground will transfer you over to tower because tower is going to be the people that are in charge of you taking off okay so at some point they would have told me to uh, switch over to tower which I have done um, and then obviously you'll get a holding point and the holding point is where you would stop prior to going onto the runway which is just here or a little bit further down um, just here if you needed the extra bit of runway uh, but like I said today I don't need that so I'm at the holding point we need to do a couple more things before we can uh, take off um, assuming that obviously ACC gives us permission to take off and what we need to do is we need to go back up to our overhead panel we need to go uh, our nose lights to take off our landing lights are going to go on uh, our tur turn off um, switch is going to go on and our strobe is going to go on um, so we've got strobe on, runway turn off, landing lights and nose lights all on. Wing lights, you would only really put them on if it's uh, night time. Uh, and that's it, up here. Um, oh sorry, missed one thing off. Packs, your air conditioning packs. Um, for performance, so that the plane has got maximum power to take off, uh, you would turn these off. Okay. If you forget, it's not going to be a massive issue. I sometimes forget, uh, like I nearly did then. Uh, but yeah, you turn those off, and then after takeoff, you would put them back on again. Uh, we need to go down to our transponder, and we now need to turn this fully on, and we need to turn uh, the TCAS to TARA, and that just allows us to see other planes. Obviously, we won't see anything on the TCAS. Uh, because uh, we haven't got any, uh, we're not in multiplayer and we haven't got any AI planes. 
um, and then we can hit our chrono to start our stopwatch and that's just good to go so lights are on packs are off transponders on TCAS is T-A-R-A -A, um, and chrono has started so we've got permission to take off sometimes you may be told line up and wait so you literally just line up on the runway and then wait that just generally means that there's someone landed um, and they are um, still on the runway so you just need to wait for them to get out of the way so we want to get ourselves in the middle of the runway and lined up as straight as we possibly can And I'm just using the rudder to turn and then we're going to go 50% on our uh, throttle and then once I'm happy that I'm aligned we can then go full throttle or toga and what I'm looking for on this display here is our speed and we'll see like a little arrow little green uh, purple arrow and the number one so number one is v1 and then the arrow is our rotate so now we can rotate and that's us airborne nicely out of the airport so we can put our gear up And we're going to be doing a right turn so I'm actually going to go on to autopilot now so I'm going to engage autopilot so I can do some bits and pieces while the plane is flying the S speed is when we're going to switch all up to um, flaps one and under the Mantoga it will say level climb when you need to pull your throttle back to the level climb position which is just there we can then go to flaps zero because we've passed the S speed So that's all done we can disarm our speed brakes and we are good uh, 5,000 feet we're going to switch um, to standard pressure on our Q&H and if you remember we need to go all the way to Pole Hill VOR um, before we can climb past 5,000 feet so we can come up to our overhead now we can turn our pack, air conditioning packs back on um, we're approaching 5,000 feet and we're going to be at 5,000 feet like I say all the way up to Pole Hill which is just over here and that's that's the departure um, tower will hand us over to um, approach uh, they will if they need to guide us out if not we will just be flying on the um, departure sid um, and then once we're out of the control of approach they will then hand us over to center controller it's very rare that you get every single person online all at the same time but you know you might be lucky So we can just look at our charts here and we can see this is where we are, we're coming up to uh, Zumat um, and then we're going to be doing this right turn. The waypoint on here, Zumat and whatnot, is not um, showing on the actual um, Microsoft Flight Simulator flight plan. So some of the waypoints will be labelled differently uh, and that can be confusing and sometimes that's what messes up nine times out of ten if the flight plan is messed up it is the flight sims fault and not yours um, but obviously there could be that one time where you have done something wrong but it's generally because the waypoints in the flight sim don't match um, the waypoints on your uh, flight plan in sim brief or wherever else you have done it as an example a D219P is actually uh, D160 
uh, and D219I is uh, D90. So waypoints are slightly different. Uh, we'll see what the Pole Hill waypoint says uh, when we get up to there. But like I say, we're, we're uh, matter of fact, we can zoom out a little bit and have a look. Oh, it does say pole. So we're at 5,000 feet all the way to this VOR, and then when we do, do this left turn towards Nelsa, uh, we can start climbing up to um, 24,000 feet. Uh, transition altitude as well is 5,000 feet, so we can actually go standard pressure. So we're just going to click on the down button. So standard pressure, you click down, and to go back to the the normal one where you can adjust it, you click up. So I'm just going to click up on this just to reactivate our climb. It's just going to hold me there. Right, so just to double check, flaps are retracted um, and spoilers are disarmed. Our gear is up, we're on standard pressure, uh, and our packs are back on again. We've still got all of our lights on. Uh, 10,000 feet is where we will be turning them off, and then some point after that. Uh, seatbelt lights or signs can come off as well. So far, everything's all looking fine. Uh, the ETA that's at the top of the display, um, next to my call sign, the reason why it's just got those dashes and the Z at the moment. Uh, Z stands for Zulu, um, that won't acti actually kick in until we're over 10,000 feet. Alright, so we're coming up to Pole Hill, so I'm just going to dial up on here, 2000, uh, I keep saying 2400, uh, 24,000 or flight level 240. Uh, it won't actually change until I click either the up or the down. The down, um, it will climb at whatever vertical speed we set. The up will climb at the pre-programmed uh, speed uh, that is in your flight computer. So generally you, you'll be going up uh, on this little button. And if you want to adjust your increments, so at the moment it's on thousands, if you want to um, change it to hundreds you just click on this little bit here to change between the two right we're starting our left turn at pole hill so I'm just going to click up on here so we can start our climb up to 2400 oh I've done it again haven't I 24,000 feet please and our speed can start increasing as well to get the plane up although we're below 10,000 feet so it should be staying at 250 knots but the engines will speed up so the way planes work is um, to climb you actually go faster um, and then you adjust the angle to keep the speed at the same um, if we wanted to, to descend uh, you actually slow down the engines and pitch the nose down so that then the speed comes back up again so generally when you're changing um, altitudes whether it's up or down there will be a little bit of a, a blip in the speed um, while the plane works out what angle it needs to be at to keep that speed you see once we get to 10,000 feet it will start to level off the speed will go up and then once the speed is where it needs to be, then the nose will go back up again. And we'll just watch that for a little bit. Um, 10,000 feet, you would um, turn your lights off, but we'll just do that a little bit later, because I just want to show you. We've now got a speed up here of two, 290. But it needs to bring the nose down 
so that the speed can go up and catch up so the nose has come down a little bit still coming down and then once it gets up to that speed the nose will then go back up again to keep that speed otherwise it'll just carry on getting faster and faster and that is essentially <laughs> the very very basics of um, flight altitude change for those of you that didn't know obviously it's a little bit more complex than that but that is the basics of it altitude change is all controlled with speed and pitch so watch this now once we get to our um, speed that we're going to be flying at the nose goes back up again to hold the speed there we go up up and up right so let's turn our lights off and they won't come back on again until our um, descent back down past 10,000 feet so this is pretty much it now uh, we're just going to be climbing all the way up to the cruise but what we need to do is we need to plan our uh, descent when are we going to descend and this is probably the most confusing part um, for a lot of people it's like when do I descend you can pretty much just follow what other people are doing um, alternatively you can obviously work it out for yourself and that's what I'm going to hopefully show you now so bring up the charts let's uh, do this together so you can see what's going on so we've got our charts open so what I need to do is I need to scroll all the way across here uh, we can close you down because we don't need you and we need to get our airport charts our um, star and our approach so I'm going to click on EGPH open charts list close you down and then we want our star we're coming in the in pip one echo so if I just click on that we can see we're coming into in pip and we're going to go past S, S do do that right turn um, and then we're going to be coming out over the sea here and coming back in onto the runway so that is our arrival so let me uh, pin you and we could just overlay that over our route we can just see in pip in rev esks do flight down here um, and then this bit here is our approach so we can click on approach we want runway 24 cat 23 uh, ILS so that's the way we're going to be coming in around here this arc uh, 12 DME arc all the way around to uh, D12 D9 and then on the glide slope uh, D12 here we need to be at 3000 feet so let me pin you and then we'll just get our taxi charts out as well so we're coming on a 24 we'll probably come off at um, holding point Bravo and then taxi back down Alpha into Echo for one of these stands here so we'll pin you let's go back to our um, star um, and things that we need to look at is any information here so we're coming on in pip one echo so flight level 260 by in pip well we're at 240 so that's fine flight level 70 by tartan so tartan we need to be at flight level 70 so that is our key marker there then obviously we're going to be descending down descending down 3000 feet uh, and then obviously on the glide slope down so that is the key one that we are interested in is tartan so if we go to our flight computer here let me just move that out of the way for you uh, and then we click on um, the prog button we can put in that uh, VOR tartan t-a-r-t-n click on this button here and it will tell you how far away we are from it perfect then we can come over to our um, flight pad click on this little calculator button um, shows us our speed so we can click on sync that's our current altitude I don't know what's saying to are we still climbing oh yeah we are still climbing um, but what we can do is we can put in here uh, seven oh no that's the wrong button um, just a little thing if you press your number pad it actually will um, 
type the number in as well as change your uh, view so you need to use the numbers above your letters on your keyboard uh, so we want 7000 feet and it's telling us currently at our current altitude obviously we're still climbing but we're almost at uh, our cruise altitude we need to be starting our descent 53 miles nautical miles away from Tartan we're currently 82 miles away from Tartan so it's going to be somewhere around about uh, a bevy maybe a little bit after that that we are going to be descending 30 actually it'll be a little bit further than that let's just zoom out a little bit more so in pip in pip um maybe just before in pip is where we're going to be starting at our uh, descent so we can see we're at cruise altitude now um seat belts can come off and that's it really cruise altitude target altitude as we said on our charts um, which is at tartan 7000 feet so we put that in there and in the prog button we put in tartan and it's given us our distance now when you are getting close to your destination it will say this enter destination data really really simple click on performance and you need to tab until it says our approach here so we've got our approach ILS24 so that's already showing up which is great we need to put in our Q&H which we can get from here and it's now changed to 1011 so Q&H of 10 11 temperature is 18 degrees so 18 can go in here now you can do this right at the start of your flight plan but obviously the Q&H and temperature may change and the wind may change the wind is 180 at 11 so depending on how far your flight is you may want to leave this until you are closer but obviously a short flight like this you could have done this at the start right transition altitude again we'll get that from our charts um, and it says here transition altitude level set by ATC let me just quickly show you that so it says there uh, transition level set by ATC so because we did we did 5,000 feet out of Manchester we'll do 5,000 feet here um, but again ATC would tell us what that is so we've got that in there um, the barrel radio this is your minimums uh, and this is what you would use to decide whether it's safe to land or not uh, I'm not going to bother with that today uh, purely because uh, it's clear weather and it's not complicated but it uh, takes a little bit more uh, understanding which obviously I want to try and keep today's flight as simple as I can providing the weather isn't too bad and you can see the airport you don't really need to worry about that right we're currently 60 miles out we needed to be at 53 uh, and as you can see we're getting closer to in pip so it's going to be pretty much spot on with in pip maybe just a little bit before that we are going to be starting our descent and tartan is somewhere around here but it's not showing on our flat computer but that's what we've got our charts for so 55 so what i can do now is i can change this to 7000 feet And then once we hit 53, which we are pretty much there, we can start our descent by clicking on the up button. So it'll keep with the managed speeds. And basically what will happen now is the engines will drop back. And then the nose will start dropping down to keep the 250 knot speed that we have. So it's saying here that we need to be 230 knots at Eskdu. 
um, ATC may tell you to be at certain speeds, certain altitudes, certain directions, and obviously that's what you would do manually. But for the purpose of today's flight, I'm just going to let the uh, the plane manage the speed. So we may end up um, being over 230 knots here because we are above 10,000 feet. But once we drop to 10,000 feet, it will slow down. <clears throat> In fact, in rev, we need to be at 250 knots. Uh, so we're going to be a little bit over speeding through these here, but again, I'm not too uh, worried for today. Um, if I was flying in Vaxim, obviously I would be uh, ensuring that I'm not breaking any speed limits. Here we are in rev S2 maximum 250, Tartan maximum 230. So that's showing slightly different from what's on here because on our chart, um, ESCDU is t maximum 250, um, but on here, ESCDU is maximum 230. Not so, slight discrepancy between the two obviously the charts is going to be what i'm going to be following and again if atc was online they would be telling me uh, what speeds i need to be at so thinking ahead things that we're going to be doing uh, at 10,000 feet we're going to be turning our lights on uh, we can put our seat belt signs on now um but yeah 10,000 feet we put our lights on 5,000 feet we're going to be going to our q and h which is 10 11 um, and then obviously at some point we're going to be doing our flaps uh, we can arm our speed brakes now we don't need uh, our uh, yes yeah, speed brakes we or ground spoilers we don't need to necessarily do that right a second but um, there's no harm but obviously if you end up using your speed brake to slow down because you're going too fast then it will unarm it um, but I don't think I'm going to need my uh, speed brake to slow down so I'm going to arm that now just so that it's done and ready so far everything's looking okay a little bit of wind a little bit of buffeting going on Buffeting, buffeting. All right, so a bit of a waiting game now to uh, get to ten thousand feet. Now, of course, you could just do this all manually. You could t take off your autopilot and fly it um, hand flying. Um, and now and again, I do do that, especially if the uh, flight plan has gone a little bit funky or the plane's not doing what, what I want it to do, which it has done plenty of times in the past. Uh, I will then just hand fly it, but when it works, I like to use it. Right, so we've passed Eskadu. Um, now the flight plan isn't I should be doing a right turn now to Tartan Tartan is like I say somewhere here but the flight plan is taking me to TLA and then down this way so I'm just going to follow this I'll keep it on this at the moment um, but looking at the charts we're actually uh, we should have gone from S2 we should have basically cut this corner off um, in this direction to here I think I think this might be tartan um, but that's fine um, I'm not too concerned about this 
Uh, again, if I was on VATSIM, they would probably be vectoring me. Uh, if not, I would be following the charts. Um, and let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So as you can see, we're kind of coming up here, and then we're going to do a right turn to it to uh, Tartan, rather than going straight in on this 007 um, direction. So just be aware of stuff like that. Um, it is the flight sim. Um, it does do things like this now and again with certain uh, departures and arrivals. But as long as you um, understand what's going on. So now we're doing a right turn towards Tartan. So we're just coming into it at a slightly different angle. But I do know from previous experience, if I hadn't put in that TLA waypoint, it would have said, sent the route up to almost at the runway and then done some weird funky kind of loop around, uh, which is something that I didn't want to do and I definitely won't want to do on uh, on VATSIM, that's for sure. Right, we're approaching 10,000 feet, speed has slowed down to 250 knots, so let's get our landing lights on. We're not quite at Tartan yet. So again, these um, altitudes here are different from the charts, and that's just because I've got this on. So I'm actually going to turn that off, so we can just see a little bit clearer what's going on here. Weather's quite nice. We are on live weather as well, so fortunate that we've got good weather for us today. A little bit bumpy, but um, it's not thunder and rain, which is always nice. So we're about three miles from Tartan, so yeah, we should be fine for getting down to 7,000 feet. So what I'm actually going to do now, because we will be at 7,000 feet at Tartan, maybe a little bit above, is I'm actually going to set my um, next altitude of 3,000 feet, um, which will be the um, start of our approach. So if I just bring that chart up, quickly show you that. So we're coming into Tartan and then we're going to be doing this arc around and then in. But by this point here, we need to be at 3000 feet um, for our glide slope. We just zoom in. So D12 is 3000 feet. And then we're going to start our descent at D9. Um, all the way down so you can see now we're just coming in on this arc here so yeah all looking good so far hopefully uh, and this is the the bit that always makes me nervous is when I'm coming in is whether the plane will actually do an ILS landed most of the time it does sometimes it doesn't um, and that can be quite um, stressful when it doesn't do what you want it to do but hopefully today it will be fine so it's just holding this altitude at the moment because we're reducing our speed a little bit more and then it's going to start the descent again so we are now, because we're at this, li this little green circle, it's like the opposite of the S um, when we was um, taking off. So that's telling us now that we're at a speed where we can go for flaps 1. So we're going to go flaps 1. start descending again all the way down to um, 
Well, I've got flight level 60 here at the moment, but then it will change to 3000 once we get past this waypoint. And that actually ties in with the charts as well. Right, so at this point now we can start getting ready for um, our approach. Um, so we can hit our LS so that we get our glide slope details on here. We'll stick it over here as well for the second officer. Oh, nope. That one. Nope. That one there. Please. Thank you. Uh, we can come up and turn our uh, nose lights on and our runway lights on. And then I'm just going to double check to make sure we're on flaps one at the moment. We've got our speed brake armed. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to put our auto brakes to a medium and we are going to ping the cabin crew. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. Right, for some reason it is sticking at 6,000 feet, which is obviously not what we want, so we're going to click manual uh, mode and we are going to descend down again sometimes this does happen uh, it's just a flight sim being a little bit cranky i don't want to leave it too late and then end up um overshooting our ils so let's get that down So looking good. So we basically need to be at 3,000 feet by this waypoint here. So we've got about five miles to get that altitude down. Now once we get to 3,000 feet, I'm going to hit a flap two. So I'm just looking over at my charts, as you can see here, we're on this arc coming around, again we need to be at 3000 feet by D12, so we should be fine, might be a little bit over, it shouldn't be too bad. But what I'm looking at here is these diamonds, so this diamond here is our um, horizontal and then we've got our um, or our altitude sorry we need this to be above and then we've got this one here for our left and right and we want this in the middle when we uh, we do our little turn so it's still not quite at 3000 feet but we should be okay so long as this is above the yellow um, line then we should be okay. And I'm checking here. Uh, 108.9 is our um, ILS DME. We've got our distance here. So that's all looking fine. I'm going to flick over to this one. I'm going to put on this on the LS so we can just see whether we're all lined up on there and then this left turn we should be able to lock on to our ILS if it's all working fine if not we will have to do it manually right so I'm gonna go flaps 2 now about 3000 feet we're doing this little left turn I'm concerned that this is all the way over there. So I'm going to hit approach, but I'm not confident that this is going to work. We've got glide slope and lock on. Uh, oh, it might be fine. So let's go autopilot 2. 
Oh yeah, so now it's moving across. Okay, so that's all fine. So all we need to do is hit the uh, approach button here that locks us on to our glide slope and then hit autopilot 2. So we've got a Cat 3 dual landing. So basically I don't need to do anything for this landing. Um, it's all doing it uh, automatically. Right, 2500, we're going to go flaps, um, what well, we are, flaps 3, so we're going to go flaps 3. And then 5 miles out, I'm going to put the gear down. But yeah, so far so good, it seems to be okay. I have done this flight sometimes where, as I've come around the corner, it's not locked on. Uh, and it's kind of been off and because it's been off slightly it's not locked on and I've had to manually kind of get myself lined up right six miles out I'm gonna go flaps full so obviously we would have been speaking with ATC, so we would have had the approach who would have been guiding us in. We would now be talking to Tower. Once we've landed and come off the runway, we would go over to ground. Right, let's go gear down. Let's just check our state of our gear here. So we've got three greens, gears all down. Auto brake medium, speed brake is armed, full flaps, um, seat belts on, lights are all on, ping the cabin crew. We're going to let the plane do the rest. Um, now you can, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and I do it plenty of times, you can, oh let's have a look out there. Um, manually land this there's absolutely no harm in that uh, a lot of people do do it they would take off autopilot around about now and just manually fly it in and that's great but I'm just gonna make the most of this auto landing because I like to test things out I haven't actually done an auto landed on here because uh, I haven't flown into Edinburgh for such a long time the, the last time I flew into here um, the Autopilot 2 wasn't working on um, fly by wire, but now obviously it is. So, time to test out Edinburgh, see whether it's going to work. Uh, we've got two whites, two reds. Uh, we are slightly over to the left. 500. And we can see that on here as well. We are considerably over to the left. Um, it is kind of going over but I don't think it's gonna make it in time I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it so you can you can see what's gonna happen here we're gonna kind of land on the left hand edge here what's the wind like the wind the wind's not that bad that's just the plane locking onto the ILS uh, hasn't been perfect at all right, I'm actually gonna take over just 50. bring it over a little bit so we're not landing on the grass. 30, 20, 10. Retard. Retard. We're down. We can go reverse thrusters. And reverse thrusters will come off. we're down turn off auto brakes we want to continue taxiing we can um, put our flaps up and turn off our put down the speed brakes we're gonna exit here at Bravo see that so we're just going to be coming off here at Bravo as 
as I predicted. And then we can stop here. This is where we would be handed over to ground. What we're going to do is we are going to turn off our landing lights. We're going to turn off the runway uh, lights. We're going to turn the nose light to taxi. I'm going to turn our stroll off. Uh, we are going to turn our APU battery switch on. Wait a few seconds and then start the APU. And taxi along alpha. Um, flaps are at zero. Speed brake is disarmed. We can turn our weather off now because we don't need our weather. Uh, and we can turn our TCAS. Oh, oh, where, where am I going? Oh, what have I done here? That'll, that'll teach me for not looking when I'm driving. Yep, nothing to see here. We're just checking out the grass. I don't want to do that. <laughs> there we go. That's what happens when you try doing stuff and not looking where you're uh, where you're driving. Right. Let's get this all straightened up on here. So we've got our TCAS. Um, back on standby because we don't need that now because we're on the ground. Uh, APU has all started up. The APU is available. I don't know why this is twisting so much. Can you just go in a straight line? That would be great. Uh, weather is off. Uh, we can stop our chrono. So 42 minutes. Not too bad. Uh, when you're taxiing, try and keep your speed. Um, oh, what's going on with the scenery here? That's probably why... Um, oh. S someone has stolen Edinburgh Airport. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can you just put in the comments below if you know whether Edinburgh is actually still here or not <laughs> because <laughs> on my screen it isn't I've not this is the first I've ever seen this in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator I've had it plenty of times in X-Plane but never in Microsoft Flight Simulator how bizarre is this there's no airport anymore right let's stop there we'll put on our parking brake uh, we'll turn off our taxi lights because we don't need them anymore. We'll turn... Let me do this correctly. Uh, parking brake is on. APU bleed can come on. Um, let's put on external power. Come down here, turn our engines off. One and two. Wait for the screen to pop up. We shall continue. Uh, TCAS can go to standby. Um, fuel pumps can come off. Seatbelt signs can come off. And that is that already. For passengers to depart <laughs> depart the plane and get into the airport that is no longer here oh uh, at least the the jetway works but we've got to jump across this gap and then jump off here um, I have got some broken scenery here uh, I'm gonna have to have a look at that and try and fix that because that 
that is a problem. Well, other than um, Edinburgh Airport disappearing for me, um, that flight actually went uh, reasonably okay. A little bit of a, an issue on that final uh, approach and it kind of drifting off to the left. Uh, that could be something to do with I've broken something with my scenery file somewhere, so I'm going to have to have a look at that and see what's going on um, and hopefully get that working. Uh, but other than that, the flight seemed to go quite well. Hopefully this has um, helped you out and get a, better, a bit of a better understanding on how to fly this plane. Again, I'm no real-life airline pilot. Um, I'm just a keen enthusiast um, who flies, if you didn't already guess the pilot club a great community full of real life pilots and uh, flight enthusiasts like myself as well as ATC um, guys and yeah really really good uh, community so links in the description to everything that I've used today and obviously uh, the pilot club discord I'm also going to put a link in the discord uh, in the description to my personal discord that um, I'm recently starting up because obviously I play lots of games it's not just flight sim I play lots of games and obviously I want to build up a community um, and I want to try and build up a community for when new world releases um, hopefully the end of September it's been delayed a month uh, so for those of you that are uh, keen on new world and been following or watching my new world videos um, obviously I want to build up community so that we can start our own settlement in there but anyway, um, I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. If you have got this far, if you haven't got this far, then obviously you're not going to hear me. So it makes no difference. But again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit that like button. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And hit the notification bell so that you know when new videos come out. Um, next video we will be doing on VATSIM. And if I can do the same flight again, I will. Um, but obviously it's all going to be dependent on what ATC is online uh, and hopefully uh, Edinburgh Airport will uh, will come back <laughs> that's made me chuckle anyway stay safe everyone and I'll see you soon goodbye